Hey, welcome to this episode of Detroit Pete's Talk. I'm Dr. Jamil Smith, Lead Integrated Behavioral Health Pediatric Psychologist at Wayne Pediatrics and Clinical Assistant Professor in the School of Medicine at Wayne State University. Today I am here with Dr. Miriam Behar. She is a board certified general pediatrician at Wayne Pediatrics and is on faculty as well in the Department of Pediatrics in the Medical School at Wayne State. Dr. Behar is here to talk about staying safe this summer um, with our kids out of school, educating ourselves on how to keep our kids healthy indoors and outdoors mm -hmm. is more important than ever. Welcome, Dr. Behar. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great. So, Dr. Behar, what are some common causes of concern for the summer season? Um, so the things that I was going to talk about today, uh, there are four. Uh, one is heat stroke. Um, and the second one is, is you, uh, excessive uh, exposure from UV light from the sun, like sunburn. Um, uh, and then just things that happen to kids over the summer. So scrapes and bumps, bumps and uh, bug bites. Uh, they're spending a lot more time outdoors running around like maniacs. Uh, getting into uh, trouble and, and the bugs seem to love them. Uh, and then the last thing um, is just social media use. Kids are out of school, they've got more free time on their hands. And so they if they have access to devices, they may be doing things on social media. So we we're gonna chat about that a little bit as well. Okay, great, wonderful ideas to consider. So in the summer, we're in the sun a lot. How can we protect our kids from things like heat stroke? So, um, so I thought I'd just talk a little bit about heat stroke and how you can uh, recognize it. So, um, so basically this is elevated temperature from exposure to prolonged exposure to excessive heat. Um, uh, and common signs uh, of heat stroke can include uh, dizziness, uh, fatigue, confusion, heart palpitations, nausea. Uh, when you have heat stroke, you, uh, normally sweating is a normal response uh, to try to cool off, but uh, people with heat, heat stroke often don't sweat. Uh, rapid heart uh, heartbeat, rapid breathing, uh, very flushed appearance, uh, very warm skin, and, and headaches. Those, can, those are some of the signs of, uh, of heat stroke. Um, there are some high risk factors. Uh, uh, kids that are overweight are more prone to this, they just get, get warm faster. Um, if, kids are, if kids are sunburned, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, if they're ill, so if they're under the weather, um, might even be running a little bit of fever, they're gonna be more prone to heat stroke if they, if they go outside, uh, especially and exert, uh, exert themselves. Um, and also kids with sickle cell disease are more prone to this um, as well. So if you're concerned that your child has heat stroke, say if they seem, you know, overly warm and, and flushed and they're exhibiting some of these you know, symptoms like the fatigue and confusion, uh, nausea, et cetera. Um, you wanna get them out of the sun quickly um, into the shade or, or preferably indoors. If, if there's air conditioning so much the better, but if, uh, even putting on a fan uh, will help to uh, cool them off. You wanna undress them. Uh, you wanna, if possible, um, you can put them in a tub of cool water. Uh, if you don't have a tub, you can just use some um, cool towels and just keep replacing them, like put the towels on, uh, they'll, they'll warm up from the child and then you can put more cold water on them and uh, keep using those. And you don't wanna force a child with heat stroke to drink water um, unless they're alert and conscious because if they're not, if they don't have their full faculties, they could aspirate um, the water. Um, we want to try to prevent this from uh, happening. So if, you know, if your kids are playing outside and it's a particularly hot day, um, make sure they have access to water that they can sip frequently. Not all kids um, express thirst. Um, I'm one of those people I just I, I have to think about it uh, to drink water. So, um, you know, hopefully they're being supervised and you have to offer them water frequently. And even if they say they don't want it, make them take sips uh, uh, periodically. Uh, take rest breaks where they can get out of the sun, go into the shade, um, have them wear uh, light colored clothing uh, that uh, light colored clothing reflects the sun rather than um, absorbs it, uh, clothing that's lightweight and, and kind of breathable, um, not too tight. 
Um, and then the, the worst hours um, for going out in the sun are gonna be between the hours of 11 in the morning and three in the afternoon. Um, I would say in Detroit, maybe even a little bit later because it gets dark so late. So I even maybe, maybe stretch that to four or five in the afternoon. Um, uh, so maybe going out to play after dinner might be a better idea than before when the sun is at its peak hours um, uh, where they might you know, be most, most at risk for this. So those are, some, those are some ways to recognize it and then some things you can do to treat it. Yeah, that's so helpful thinking about um, things we can be doing through the day uh, to make sure that they, uh, we prevent a heat stroke. Um, we know I wanted to say actually one more thing, uh, just uh, this kind of popped into my head uh, with, especially with a younger child um, who's in a, a car seat. Uh, I mean, you should never do this under any circumstances, but even like leaving a child unattended in a locked car, um, especially in the summer during the warm weather uh, to run into the store, to the gas station, something like that. Don't ever do that because there it, it really takes a matter of minutes for their temperature to rise um, and they can become uh, they can basically develop heat stroke and this can actually be lethal. So don't ever do that under any circumstances. Yeah, that's a great reminder. Um, we know that being in the sun can be dangerous due to UV radiation. So how can we be staying safe um, out in the sun? Okay. Yeah. So, um, so UV radiation is basically this kind of invisible uh, type of energy. It's a certain uh, wavelength of light um, that, the, that the sun produces. Um, uh, light has lots of different wavelengths, but this is a particular wavelength that we get from direct sunlight. And this, this radiation um, with prolonged exposure, um, uh, especially on the skin, can damage the um, the cells, they damage the DNA in the cells and that can lead to um, uh, skin cancer. Uh, so the number one way to, well, there, there, I would say there, there are two ways to prevent this. One is to cover the skin. So wearing um, uh, light colored clothing on as much of the skin as you can. And it's hard because if it's hot outside, you don't wanna cover a lot of your body, but I see now when I go to the beach, um, most kids now are wearing, instead of your, your traditional bathing suits where the arms are and the legs are exposed, they're often wearing these long sleeved um, bathing suits because the more skin that you cover, um, the less the less it's gonna be exposed to the, uh, the sun. But obviously we can't block everything. So then using sunblock um, uh, is the next best way other than covering or, or staying out of the sun to, uh, protect from uh, from sunburn and, and UV ray exposure. So you wanna use um, a sunblock that is at least th um, 30 SPF is what I usually recommend. Um, it, there are lots of um, uh, sunblocks out there, You know, some of them safe for kids, some of them don't. It doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be a product that's exclusively for kids, but, but generally uh, 30 SPF uh, or more is, is what I recommend. And, that there, there is a point at which, you know, because some of them will say 50 SPF or 80 SPF, it's not clear whether that really makes a difference. So as long as it's at least 30 SPF, then you're, uh, then you're okay. You have to, um, it does, it does come off in the water, uh, even if it says water resistance. So you do need to reapply after uh, the kids have been swimming. Um, and it, it only lasts for several hours, basically. So you, if they're out all day, basically, you do need to, uh, to reapply. And remember, we did say, Try not to be out all day in the sun. You know, take break, take breaks where they're uh, going into the shade. Um, it is a myth that um, people with darker skin tones don't need sunscreen. That is not true. Um, they can they can burn and develop skin cancer. So you need to wear sunscreen, even if you even if you have dark uh, dark skin pigment. Uh, the melanin, which is the stuff that makes your skin uh, uh, skin dark, uh, it does block out some of the UV rays, but not all of them. Uh, so no matter what ethnic group you're from, you need to wear, uh, you need to wear sunscreen. Yeah, great reminder. You know, playing outside is a lot of kids' favorite part of summer. What are some risk factors associated with the great outdoors? Um, so, uh, you know, kids being outside is great. And we encourage, American Academy of Pediatrics now encourages at least one hour a day of, of uh, physical uh, physical activity but they can come across all these uh, potentially dangerous things, including um, bug bites and tripping and falling and also uh, uh, poisonous plants. Uh, so keeping a first aid kit uh, handy uh, is, is a good idea. Uh, you wanna have like a, 
a water bottle because if they get scrapes, you want to be able to kind of flush the flush the scrape to get the dirt out. That'll prevent um, infection. Um, having uh, Benadryl, say if they come across something and they break out uh, the, the, that they might be allergic to uh, and break out in hives, um, having Benadryl on hand, it's a short acting antihistamine. We don't typically use it like, like if they're taking medicine for allergies, that's a different story, but this will give them quick relief and relieve the hives and the, uh, and the itching, uh, especially if they've got um, uh, insect bites. Um, for uh, uh, for sunburns, um, you uh, generally uh, want to just put on like a, um, uh, well, keep the area covered um, and then just use like a emollient um, uh, cream, just something to uh, uh, moisturize. Uh, if your child has asthma, um, make sure that they have their rescue inhaler, their albuterol inhaler handy. Hopefully with a spacer, we shouldn't just be using inhalers in our mouth. We want to use a spacer to get it back into the uh, into the lungs. If your child is on allergy medication, such as Benadryl or Zyrtec, have that handy. Say if they haven't taken it and they they get a lot of allergy symptoms when they're uh, uh, when they're outside. Um, uh, some um, insect uh, insect repellent, uh, uh, usually something that contains DEET is D E E T is is the most effective. It has a very long chemical name. Um, for kids, generally uh, something that's less than twenty percent DEET is is going to be safe. Um, uh, and then just for um, just general first aid, like for scrapes and cuts, uh, um, something. Uh, something to uh, kind of clean off the of the wound, maybe like an antiseptic wipe um, and then some band-aids uh, if you need to cover up a, a scrape when you're when you're outside. Yeah. Um, lastly, during summer, kids may use uh, social media to stay in touch with friends from school. Um, with the American Psychological Association's recently released health advisory on social media use for adolescents, thoughtful monitoring is essential how can we guide young people to stay safe online this summer? So, um, uh, you know, we I recognize that um, most most kids, at least in middle school and up, you know, have have, tap, have devices, uh, usually cell phones, and they're they're on social media. So, you do want to have a frank discussion about what's what's okay to post and what's not okay to post. Um, anything that that involves. Um, uh, sort of has sexual content, you know, private private parts, um, you know, pictures uh, uh, pictures of, of, of people's uh, uh, private areas are not okay. Um, one thing you need to remind them is that once it's on social media, it stays and other people have access to it and they can get in trouble. Uh, I've known kids to get expelled um, from school. For, uh, you know, it's usually and usually zero tolerance uh, for, you know, for posting inappropriate um, uh inappropriate pictures. Um, so uh, uh, you don't want to ever, you want to make sure that they're not sharing any of their own personal information because there are people out there that are trolling, uh, looking for uh, for access to kids' personal information. Uh, uh, so things like uh, full name, address, um, uh, what grade they're in can be really risky. So you want to make sure that they're not posting anything uh, anything like that. Um, uh, and just making sure that, you know, making sure that they understand that uh, privacy is important, that uh, anything that they put on there, you know, other people will have access to. And so don't be posting things about other people uh, that you know about friends, because you're basically invading their, um, uh, in their in invading their privacy. Um, so you need to, you know, set some, set some boundaries. Um, I think, uh, there are ways that parents can block uh, kids from getting into certain uh, certain sites, and I think putting those uh, putting those restrictions in place is uh, perfectly reasonable. And um, and just you know talking with them about what's okay and what's not okay to look at and to uh, and to post. Yeah, um, and just really having a plan, you know, an approach that you're going to have as a parent for monitoring and checking in on what's going on on those devices. Um, is a good way to have ongoing communication and monitoring. So yes, thank you for all of those helpful tips. I wanna thank Dr. Behar for chatting with us about the importance of summertime safety and how to keep our kids healthy this summer. Uh, for more information or to make an appointment at Wayne Pediatrics, your one-stop pediatric practice, visit waynepediatrics.org. Uh, also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for new Detroit Peace Talk episodes posting 
the first Wednesday of the month. And remember, pediatricians are the best option for the medical needs of children. Take care. Thank you.